A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Hello my mathematicians, welcome back to our video. So I was going through my notes, looking for things to cover here in this video. And over the years I have covered a lot of Putnam integrals on this channel, be it the one with the oily macaroni constant or the one with the um, 1 over x to the x power and so on. Um, but I noticed in my notes that I haven't covered this one. It's a pretty famous one. Uh, many people have covered it before on YouTube, but I thought I might uh, give my input as well on this integral. And it's a fun one. I would prefer the exponent of the tangent to be 69, um, but what can you do about it? Putnam decided on square root of 2 to make it um, look pretty damn hard, but it actually isn't too hard. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video. But before we dive into the main content, I would like to thank today's sponsor, <laughs> Raid Shadow Legends, the only sponsor that really fits the content here on this channel for sponsoring this episode. Raid is a recurring sponsor of this channel, but if you've never heard of it before, let me introduce. If you are a video game enthusiast that loves to engage in global PvP battles, massive PvE boss battles, in-game collectibles such as champions and humongous dungeon raids, then you are in for a treat. Speaking of champions, let me introduce one of their many races to you for a bit. Dark Elves. In Raid we distinguish between High and Dark Elves, who were once just part of a single race. Evil powers manifested in Dark Elves over the centuries though and made them go batshit crazy, resulting in a war between races. And 700 years later, they still don't get along. But no matter how evil, I still like having one or two in my team since they look slick as fuck. Next to hundreds of collectible heroes, I just really enjoy the turn-based gameplay in general. Takes me back to my Final Fantasy days. Also, their dungeons and raids offer a huge variety in gameplay too, adding a great touch to the overall gaming experience. So why not try it out on your own? Either scan the QR code down there in the right corner or use my link at the top of the description for some pretty dope boosts. New players will get a free starter pack worth almost 30 bucks to kickstart your epic journey. We're talking a free champion Aina, 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill and 1 ancient chart that you can activate to get yourself another hero. So you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. So why wait any longer? I'll see you in game, I suppose. Papa Flammy 69420 Use the link at the top of the description and now we are going to continue with the main video. Now, this integral can be dealt with by exploiting basically simple geometry or symmetry on the graph basically. We are not going to sketch something, we are not going to do sketchy stuff here on this integral. But what we are rather going to do is we are going to do a simple phase shift in our dummy variable x. Um, phase shift, if you ever did physics and integrals involving trigonometric functions, then the phase shift is something that you encounter a lot of times probably. Phase shift just means that we are going to shift our dummy variable by pi, pi over 2, whatever. But we can actually go smart at it by shifting our tangent by exactly pi over 2 units to the, let me think for a second, left it should be, to the left. So we are going to introduce the substitution, let x be equal to, and now we are going to shift it, okay, by pi over 2. Pi over 2 is the upper bound that we have here, so pi over 2 minus t. Meaning, on the other hand, if we were to differentiate both sides implicitly, we are going to get that dx is nothing other than negative dt. Yeah, it seems easy enough and it is. Now let us plug all of our new things in. Now what happens to the upper and lower bounds at first? If we plug 0 into our um, x, what we are going to get is, um, okay, uh, when is pi over 2 minus t equal to 0? Well, if t is equal to pi over 2. Next up, if we plug pi over 2 into our x, when is pi over 2 equal to pi over 2 minus t? Obviously when t is equal to 0. See what happened here? Due to the phase shift, we shifted the upper and lower bounds around. Okay, put them on their heads. Now we can plug all of the other things in. We know what dx is. dx is nothing other than negative dt. 
we're going to deal with negative sign in a second. We can do something very fancy with it. Now divided by one plus, and now we are going to get uh, on the one hand, the tangent to the square root of 2 power of, and now x is nothing other than pi over 2 minus t. Okay, now if you have negative an integral of something, especially if it's a definite integral, you can distribute negative sign into here and change the up and lower bounds. This just has to do with the um, fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, if you have a definite integral, then it's just the primitive evaluated at um, b minus the primitive evaluated at a. If you distribute negative sign to there, it's the primitive evaluated at a minus the primitive evaluated at b, which is just the integral by definition using fundamental theorem of calculus from um, b to a. Uh, meaning what we can do is if we distribute negative sign here, we can just switch the upper and lower bounds around. Okay. Now we are basically back at the same up and lower bounds once again. Now next up what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at our tangent here. Okay, This is just 2 to the square root of 2 power, but we can just um, single-handedly take a look at the tangent of pi over 2 minus t, what this is going to evaluate to. We can actually rewrite this a tiny little bit. This is what the phase shift is going to be used for. If we take a look at the tangent of pi over 2 minus t, I want you guys to notice that the tension is an odd function, meaning the tension of negative x is the same as negative the tension of x. This just has to do with the fact that it's the quotient of the sine over the cosine. Sine is an odd function, cosine is, a, is an even function, meaning uh, odd divided by even is going to be an odd function. Meaning if we were to drag the negative sine to the outside, that's the same as negative the tension of um, t minus pi over 2. Now, tension written out, as mentioned before, is um, in our case negative the sine of t minus pi over 2 divided by the cosine of t minus pi over 2. Now we can just take a look at the uh, graphs of sine and cosine. Now if we take a look at the uh, graph of the sine at first, so in normal case sine looks like this. Okay? And if we were to shift this pi over 2 units to the, mm, in our case, negative pi over 2 means into the positive x direction, mm, positive t direction, I, I should rather say. Meaning pi over 2 units means it's going to be shifted like this. And if you take a closer look, this new curve is going to be, well, that's a negative cosine wave of t in our case. Meaning we are going to get negative and negative is positive, so up here we are going to get the cosine of t divided by, okay, now what about the cosine of t minus pi over 2? By the same logic as before, shifting it pi over 2 units to the right, we are going to get out, okay, this point goes here. Well, that's just a simple sine wave, meaning we get cosine over the sine of t, which is just 1 over the tangent of t, or in other words, the cotangent of t. But we are going to leave it how it is here. Meaning, our original integral, please always keep this in mind, is still equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of dt, divided by 1 plus, and now we get 1 over blah blah blah, where the blah 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 is the tension, obviously, to the square root of 2 power. Um, distributing the square root of 2 into our tension, or into the fraction in general, gives us the tension of square root of 2 uh, to the power square root of 2 of t. Well, this right here is our integral at the moment. We, we got a complex fraction down there in the d denominator. Um, we are going to get rid of it. It's going to be a lot of fun once you get rid of it by expanding everything um, by tangent to the square root of 2 power over the tangent to the square root of 2 power. Meaning what we are going to get is the integral from 0 to power over 2 of and our next thing we are going to get is um, on the top we are going to get the tangent to the square root of 2 power of t divided by 1 plus tangent to the square root of 2 power of t dt. Now, dummy variables means um, our integral right here is not dependent on this t that we have here. If you write t or x, it really doesn't matter. I can just introduce a new substitution, let t be equal to x. And then we are going to have the same variable that we started off with. So let's replace the t with an x because it really doesn't change anything um, on our arguments. And well, now you're going to notice something. Substitution is an equivalent process. The original integral is just rewritten to be of that form. Meaning both of those integrals are actually equal. Let us give those a name. Now, this original integral, we are going to call it i for 
integral, obviously. Um, and our last integral is, well, we got equal signs here, that's an equivalence variation. This is still our integral i. Now what would happen if we were to add i and i together? Well, i plus i is by definition just a successor of i, so 2i. And if we were to add those together, this is just the integral from 0 to power by 2 plus another integral from 0 to power by 2, meaning we can use the lin linearity of the integral to bring it together as a real operator into one integral um, from 0 to power by 2. And now, let's take a look at the integrands. They both got the same denominator. Okay, if you know fractions, 1 third plus 4 thirds is something plus something over 3 once again. So we can just bring it onto the same denominator. So 1 plus the tangent to the square root of 2 power of x. And well, adding the numerators together. Uh, in the numerator, there's nothing here. Nothing means 1 times the x, you could say. Okay, uh, meaning we got a 1 here plus and the thing that we got here in the numerator, tension to the square root of 2 power of x, all of this dx. Well, that's a bummer, I suppose. Um, that's not very exciting, to be honest. That's just one right here in the, in the integrand, okay? Um, and integrating just the, the differential dx right here, the differential one form just uh, leaves us with um, x, variate from 0 to power by 2. And on 0 it's going to vanish, it's a morning polynomial. And on power over 2 we are just going to plug this in. Meaning, overall, 2 times r, 2 times the integral we are striving for is nothing other than power over 2. And if we were to now divide by the number 2, which is not equal to 0 because it's the successor of 1, meaning by definition it's not equal to 0, we're going to get our final answer as the integral being equal to power over 4. And that's why I said at the very beginning that I would rather have 69 up here in the exponent because um, the exponent really doesn't mean shit. It really doesn't mean anything here. It could be anything. And I think they just put square root of 2 here because, well, just for the memes, I suppose because it looks hard that way. Um, there's actually uh, another kind of integral where this is used. And I think you can uh, generalize this whole thing that we did here by just taking a look at an odd um, function down here instead of a tangent, okay? Just generalizing this. And there are integrals like um, the, the integral from something to something of one over one plus x to the golden ratio, for example. I have seen those before, if I'm not mistaken. And they basically all evaluate to one just because of the same trick that we were using here, if you evaluate it from zero to one, I suppose. Um, yeah, something of that sort. Okay, don't take my word for it right now, but there, there's a lot of integrals where you can generalize this dummy variable method or this phase shift method that we did here. And it's going to yield the same thing, you could say. And yeah, I hope you did enjoy today's video. And yeah, don't forget to support the channel by <laughs> checking out the Raid. Raid Shadow Legends. It's my most favorite game, definitely. Um, have, have played it quite a lot. Uh, good old loot boxes. And don't forget to pre-register for a really good game. Wack! Uh, link down in the description. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!